Allah the Exalted says in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah belong the most excellent and beautiful names. So implore Him by them. Al-Imam ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on him, said, Knowing Allah Azza wa Jal, through learning his names and attributes, was the core of the message of all messengers. That message was, Establishing and fulfilling servitude to Allah alone. Why would Ibn al Qayyim say such a thing? You know, it is only by virtue of such a knowledge would a person be able to worship Allah Azza wa Jal as Allah Azza wa Jal wants from him. It is only based on such a knowledge that servitude can be fulfilled. When the slave learns about the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, he becomes better acquainted with his Lord, his Creator, who commands him to worship him alone. And the more he learns about him, the more his heart becomes attached to him. So his love to his Lord increases. And therefore, his worship changes. The style of worship will change. He will worship his Lord with more submission when he learns about the qualities and names of power, might that Allah Azza wa Jal possesses. The more he learns about the kindness, the benevolence, the mercy and forgiveness of his Lord, the more hope he will have in his Lord. The more he learns about the attributes and names of punishment and wrath, the more he will become scared and thus will not transgress, and so on and so forth. And the more one learns about the names of Allah Azza wa Jal, the better his fulfillment of servitude becomes. Today I would like to touch upon three names of Allah Azza wa Jal, all of which are derived or extracted from the same root. Al-Ghafir, Al-Ghafoor, Al Ghaffar. Al Ghafir, the forgiver. Al Ghafoor, the ever forgiving. Al Ghaffar, the perpetual forgiver. All of which are derived from the root Ghafr, which literally means to hide, to cover, to conceal. Al-Imam Al-Halimi, the Shafi'i scholar, said, Allah Al-Ghaffar covers the sin of his slave, does not expose him, and forgives him for that sin on the Day of Judgment. Al-Ghafur and Al-Ghaffar are two forms 
In Arabic, they are called صيغن المبالغة Exaggerated forms of the verb. And the scholars gave different definitions or differences between these two words. Some said, al ghafir is the one who forgives. You sin, you, you sin one and you repent, he forgives. He has the capacity of forgiving. al ghafur is the one who continuously forgives. Others said, al ghafur is the one who forgives grave sins. Whilst al ghafar which is another form or, or exaggerated form of the verb, is the one who perpetually forgives or forgives regardless of how many or what is the magnitude of that sin. And it is stronger than al ghafur The people of knowledge mentioned two important points regarding these names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Number one is that Allah Azza wa Jal, being the forgiver or the ever forgiving or the perpetual forgiver, is something that reflects that He is in no need of His slaves. And that everything is in need of him. Everything resorts back to him. Must turn back to him. Everyone, jinn and mankind, are in need of Allah. And they are in need of his forgiveness. And in some cases, Allah Azza wa Jal coupled forgiveness with one of his qualities that signifies power and might and exaltedness. Like, Inna Allaha Azizun Ghafoor. Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal is the Almighty, the ever forgiving. Why? So that people would not think that he's done that out of weakness. The Almighty reflects that He overcame and overpowered everything. And that there is nothing and no one in the heaven or on earth who is beyond His control. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second important point is that one should not sin under the pretext of Allah is al ghafur al ghafar al ghafir Allah will forgive, therefore we can sin and then repent later. Because Allah Azza wa Jal did not give us the time where our lifespan is going to be concluded. That's point number one. Number two, Allah Azza wa Jal set conditions for one to be forgiven. Allah says, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ, عمل وعمل صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى And indeed, I am a perpetual forgiver. What are the conditions that must be met? For us to be deserving of this forgiveness, liman taba, for those or for the one who sincerely repents. Now, sincere repentance entails that you do it immediately after the sin, not postpone it. Liman taba wa amana and believed, wa amila salihan and did righteous deeds. And then continued to, to be upon guidance. And Imam Al-Si'di, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, said in his tafsir, Allah Azza wa Jal 
set a condition for forgiveness to be attained. And there is nothing greater from the condition or than the condition of sincere repentance for one to become deserving of the forgiveness of Allah. What results from learning and being acquainted of or with such names of Allah Azza wa Jalla? Number one is that it prevents the person from giving up hope in Allah Azza wa Jalla. It stops despair from the heart. It protects the heart from despair. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O oh my slaves, who have intensely transgressed against themselves, do not give up hope in Allah. For Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, He is ever forgiving, ever merciful. How can anyone give up hope when Allah Azza wa Jal gives him such an ayah? How can the heart not be attached to Al Ghaffar, Al Ghafur, Al Ghafir when he reads such an ayah? Another thing is that it motivates the person to perform practical or verbal deeds that result in forgiveness. For example, whoever fasts the day of Arafah will have the previous year and the following year being forgiven. So that person becomes motivated to do that, knowing that Allah Azza wa is the forgiver. Whoever says Subhanallah wa bihamdihi a hundred times in the morning, and a hundred times in the evening, Allah will forgive all his sins. And so on and so forth. It also motivates the person to continuously seek the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal. At-Tabarani reports, and it is classified as sound by Al-Albani, the following took place, this following dialogue took place between Allah and Iblis, a shaitan. A shaitan said to Allah, Bi'izzatika ya Rabb. I swear to you by your might, O Lord, I will continue to lead them astray so long as their souls are in their bodies. Talking about me and you. He took an oath upon himself, a firm one, swearing by the might of the Lord that he will work very hard to lead us astray as long as we're alive. What was the answer from Allah Azza wa Jal? Allah said, Bi'izzati wa Jalali. I swear by my might and exaltedness, I will continue to forgive them as long as they seek my forgiveness. Allahu Akbar. Makes the task of mankind very easy. And makes it very difficult for the devil. Because all it takes is sincerity with Allah Azza wa Jal. 
turning to Him, approaching Him, asking Him truly for forgiveness, and it's happening. It also motivates the person to repent to Allah, as the verse we earlier mentioned. So you repent, you fulfill the condition, forgiveness is happening. And in our practical day-to-day -day practices, learning that Allah Azza wa Jal is forgiving, it encourages us and motivates us as human beings together to pardon one another, to forgive one another with the hope that Allah Azza wa Jal will deal with us as we deal with others. You forgive, Allah will forgive you. You show mercy, Allah will show mercy. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahman Those who show mercy will receive mercy from the All-Merciful. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. 